Hey, so you want to start free flying? Learning to fly in various positions, sitting on your back or head down? Well, slow down, because first, let's talk about the gear you need. Hey there, this is Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become a better and safer skydiver. So if you're new here, consider subscribing not to miss our videos all about skydiving, whether it's gear reviews, informational videos, or even interviews with pro athletes. So you want to start doing free fly? Well, before diving headfirst in that discipline, you need to make sure you have the right equipment. The reason to bring a particular attention to the equipment you jump whenever we talk about free flying is because you're going to have a way faster fall rate than you used to uh, compared to belly flying, for example. So this is why when you're falling, you want to make sure that whatever position you're flying in, those increased forces won't have an impact on your equipment and won't create any kind of premature opening. Because trust me, you don't want to have a premature opening at your terminal velocity. Ouch. So we don't want that to happen. So there's two things to consider to make sure that your equipment is made for free flying. The first is the fit on your body. So you want to make sure that the rig is fitting you properly. And the second thing is the elements that you have on that rig, but also their condition. Because again, the goal is to make sure that we avoid any potential malfunctions or premature opening while doing free fly. Talking about your equipment fit. Why is that very important? It's because if your equipment is loose on you and moving around while you're trying to fly, first, this can have an impact on your ability to learn the discipline. And the second, which is the most important, is that you may end up falling through your equipment. And we don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure that the fit is tight and that the, your equipment is not moving on your body. Again, why we want to bring a particular attention to that is because in free fly, well, you're going to end up being in various position and the wind will be stronger and have an impact on your body and your equipment. So this will cause your rig to move around if it's not fit properly. If your rig wasn't custom made for you, you want to reach out to an instructor or rigger so that they pay a close attention on the fit on you while you're all geared up. And particularly, while doing a sitting position, because this is the case where it can happen that someone falls through their rig. So we want to make sure the fit is tight enough. Another element to think about when you are looking at the fit of your rig, are you adjusting it properly? So that's a good question because there's a lot of people saying that their rig are moving around on them while flying, but then they're not tightening their straps properly. So that's very important to check as well. So personally, when I do belly flying, all my straps are kind of a little bit looser and um, that's okay for that discipline because we're belly flying. But what, when I go out and free fly, I'm making sure that those straps are tight very strongly. And so uh, this makes my rig more adjusted on me and it helps it not to move on my body while falling. So you want to apply that to your chest strap, but also the leg strap. Those leg straps are not made to move on you. So you want to make sure they are tighten a lot. At that point, if you made sure of the fit of your rig and that you're uh, adjusting it properly and you still have some elements to work on to make sure it fits you for the free fly discipline, well, reach out to a rigger because those guys can, uh, can bring some minor adjustments that can be a uh, lower cost, but that can help a lot in making sure your rig fits you for that discipline. All right, so now let's talk about the elements you need on your rig to make sure it's free fly friendly. And also we're going to talk about the condition of those elements, because even though you have the proper uh, thing on your rig, you want to make sure it's doing its job properly and it's not like overused, like, for example, a worn Velcro. Again, the goal is that now that you'll be flying in different position, you don't want anything to stick out and cause a malfunction or a premature opening. So let's dive on my rig so that I can show you the elements you want to look at make sure your rig is ready for free fly. All right, so for the sake of that demonstration, I'm going to go over my own equipment, which is a Vector 3. Uh, consider that yours might differ in some ways, so you want to make sure to double verify with an instructor or a rigger so that they can attest that it's a 
real free fly friendly rig that being said mine is so i'm gonna walk you through the elements you want to check on yours to make sure you can jump with it in a free fly jump so let's start at the bottom the thing the first thing you want to check is if your boc pouch is in good condition so you want to make sure you don't have any holes in there and that it still is very tight so that way you're making sure that your pallet chute won't have the chance to slip out some free flyers are also considering changing the material of their pallet chute so that it's less slippery and so it sticks in its pocket in a safer way. So another thing to consider is your, your pallet chute handle. We know that there's some handles that are free fly friendly, just like this one. And the element you want to notice is that it has a tuck tab, just like this one. But even though it has a tuck tab, it doesn't mean it's made for free flying in terms of how it fits your rig because depending on the size of your main canopy um, whether the fit will be tighter or looser in your rig and so this will have an impact on the force applied on that tuck tab so you want to make sure that whenever you slip that tab in its position so you want to make sure it has enough pressure on it to keep it at its place and the last thing you want to make sure whenever you jump is doing a check to make sure that your pallet chute is uh, properly into its pocket and that it won't tend to get out whenever you're flying. Another thing to consider is that your pallet chute bridle should always be secured underneath a flap. And uh, you wanna make sure that there's no part of it that is exposed. The reason is we want to avoid any premature opening and if you had your bridle out uh, while doing free fall at those speeds and wind forces, it might happen that um, the bridle pulls onto your pallet chute or on your pin and create a premature opening. So if we keep following the pallet chute bridle, we end up at the main closing pin. So what you want to have here in order to do free fly is that you want to make sure that your closing loop, so the white loop here, is the proper length. And so by being the proper length, it will make sure it holds the pin properly. To verify that, you can always verify with the spec of your manufacturer or your rigger. But keep in mind that depending on the main canopy size that you're putting in your rig, um, it can have an impact on the length of the loop. Meaning that if you have a tight fit, the loop will be really tighter and shorter in terms of the fit it has for the pin. But if you have a loose, uh, smaller main canopy, you'll end up having a, a looser closing loop and you want to make sure that in a case that some wind is getting to your pin and you're moving around that it won't slip out again while being here you can verify that your bridle is still always covered and secured and not exposed to the wind so for the main pin cover flap we want to make sure that it's secured and not easily opened for that you want to check if your stiffeners are in proper shape and if you have any velcros here you want to make sure that they are not overworn and that they do their job in securing the main flap now the same thing will apply for the reserve flap that we have here if you have velcros check their condition and you want to verify all your stiffener to make sure that everything is secured and not easily opened if we keep going up our equipment here we want to make sure that our risers are not exposed as well because again this could cause a premature opening to verify that you want to make sure that your tuck tabs that you have here are in good condition and doing their job to secure your risers now keep in mind that even though if you check your rig uh, not being on you and you say oh everything is properly secured consider that whenever you'll put them on or tighten your straps they can move and open and so you want to verify the condition of them and how it's securing your risers not only before putting it on but after put, putting it on as well in some cases uh, some equipments have uh, velcros here again another thing to consider is verify those velcros making sure they are in good condition and that they are doing their job in securing your risers if you notice any change where your tabs might open time to time consider checking if they're broken and consider replacing them if so because again, that's important to make it free fly friendly. All right, so now let's turn around the rig. A small element that you'll see the free fly gear have is what we call the butt strap. So that strap is simply an elastic band that will hold your leg straps 
together. That can be very important because remember when we talked about the fit on your rig and the risk of you falling out of your rig? So this makes sure that those leg straps are not going all the way up to your knees while you're sitting and making sure you are still sitting in your rig, whatever position you have. So having that small butt strap is very important whenever you think about free flying. Now, the last thing I wanted to cover with you are the cutaway and reserve handles. What you want to make sure again is that they are properly secured and that you actually need some kind of force to pull them. Again, the reason is with the force and the position you're going to be in, you want to make sure that they know they don't slip out by themselves. So to verify that, you want to make sure that the Velcros, well, first you need Velcro, <laughs> And you want to make sure that those Velcros are in good condition. And you can try on the ground to pull them by doing your procedure and uh, not too strongly though, but you'll be able to see how many force it needs to get out. So you want it to be a significant force so that they don't get out by themselves. So talking about the reserve handle, um, I wanted to let you know that you don't necessarily need to have a soft reserve handle like this one when you're starting because when you just are learning how to free fly, meaning in sit on your back or head down, well, if you still have your D-shaped handle and it's properly secured again and that it's holding tight, well, it does the job. The reason you will want to have a soft handle later on is that when you start doing grips, because when we're free flying, especially at the beginning, we might bump in each other and trying to hold grips. So you don't want anyone to be able to put their hand into your reserve handle. So this is why we recommend changing those and those handles whenever you start being at a, another level in free fly. And at that point, you'll have to consider a soft reserve handle. Now, after all that, after verifying the fit, checking your adjustment, checking that all the elements and their conditions are good to be free fly friendly. If after that you find that um, there's some element missing and that the fit is not good enough finally, well, you might have to change your container. The good thing is that if you like your main, if you like your reserve and you have an AED, well, you don't actually need to change everything. You could only look for a container that will fit you better and that will uh, be free fly friendly. To do that, you have two choices, whether you go the new route, and the good thing about that is that you're going to be able to have a custom made rig. And so you're making sure that the fit is good and you'll have all the options that you want so you can make it very free fly friendly. The second route is to go the used route. So again, it can be a little bit more difficult to find a good fit for you but still it's a good way to save some money. Talking about that, I'm planning to do a video on tips and tricks to help you buy a used equipment. So when it's done, the video will appear right here and consider subscribing also not to miss it when it's out. And lastly, whether it's a new or used equipment that you have, you always wanna make sure to verify the condition of those elements. And lastly, whether it's a new or a used rig, you always want to check the condition of all those elements to make sure that they are not broken, that they, they are not overworn, and that you don't need to actually replace them. So the main things you want to regularly check are the BOC pouch, as we talked at the beginning. Then you want to check the closing loop, all the flaps, your risers, and any Velcros that you have. All right, so now go work on those free fly skills and take coaching also to become a sky ninja faster. I hope you've enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below if you're actually a free flyer. And also consider subscribing not to miss our other videos about tips and tricks for your skydiving gear. On that I tell you, stay safe, master free flying because it's fun and challenging and blue skies. For used rig, you all want... Brrrr. <sniffs> <sniffs>